great pleasure to bring on board Dr. Naresh Chadan, Chairman and Managing Director with uh, Medanta and then Pankaj uh, Sani, Group Chief Executive Officer. Dr. Trayan, it's so nice to meet uh, not Dr. Trayan but the entrepreneur and the businessman uh, Trayan because we've always spoken to you on COVID on what is the right thing to do. Perhaps today you'll have to guide our viewers as to why they should be investing in the IPO. So at a time when there are eight, nine listed companies in India, hospital companies in India. What is so different about your hospital and why should our viewers invest in it? So actually, Medanta, if you go back in history, was created to bring to India and the surrounding countries institutions equivalent to that, which is Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic, Harvard, where that model is that on the same platform, the, all the specialties are led by leaders who are benchmarked around the world. And the fact that collective strength of all these people culminate in a very strong delivery system, which patients can get much better results because the platform lends itself to collective uh, treatments. So that's why this was brought in. We built 2.7 million square feet uh, in, in Gurugram. Uh, and put the systems in place which were representing that standard, whether it was the physical structure, whether it was the technology which was leading edge anywhere in the world. And also, fortunately, the, the human capital or the leaders, the doctors who, who joined us were actually leaders benchmarked around the world, not only in India. So with that collective uh, strength of the huge experience these doctors had and working together full time, that we were able to produce results which were, even in the most period of cases, were far, far better than what was seen before Medanta was created. So then in, we, we opened in 2009, 2010, and then by 2015, 16, we had experience that in the first 15 months, we broke even in Gurugram. It was a big investment. It was the first time that such a large hospital of 1,300 plus beds was created in the private space. Then we also, were, it's, the strength went to the next step where we were able to pay back all our debt, all the loans within six years, which were actually 12 year loans. So the performance was very strong, not only that financially, but also our systems and protocols became so robust that we felt the comfort that we can take this to other underserved areas and we did. The first was uh, Lucknow, a thousand beds in Lucknow, to serve 200 million people in UP, where this kind of standard did not exist. Then the next step was Patna, again, 130 million people with, with devoid of this kind of healthcare. So in Lucknow is 1,000 beds, Patna is 650 beds, and then we are now building a new one, which is the construction has started in Noida. Again, a very large population with this kind of standard missing. So Medanta represents that system or ecosystem where people are all full-time, they work together as teams rather than individuals, and the end result is far superior and most complicated of cases get the, the best they can get in, by way of uh, recovery and treatments. So we have done all the high-end stuff, or whether you talk about uh, heart transplants, uh, liver transplants, kidney transplants, robotics. We, you know, we actually created uh, robotic kidney transplants. So we are now uh, always at the cutting edge. And now we're starting liver, uh, the lung transplants. So all these things are under one roof. And they are also replicated because these systems and protocols have been replicated across the whole system. And we have two smaller hospitals, one in Ranchi and one in Indore. And the, you should see how the performance has been, not only a Gurugram, but the other main facilities that we have. And the growth is coming very rapidly from those. So that's why we believe that we have a system which works, which gives relief to the populations around it, and has represented India. So like you would see that uh, Newsweek International has named us the best private hospital in this part of the world, three years in a row, 20, so why, just, 
why just Newspeak? You don't need any other external endorsement. I'm happy to say the same. Out of my personal experience and uh, what happened during COVID, the kind of service and the care and the quality which you gave to care up for Indians was extraordinary. But Pankaj, we are a business channel. We have to talk numbers. My okay. simple question is, at the current market cap, at the higher end of the market cap, your market cap would be about 9,000 crore. How have you priced the IPO? Have you used industry as a benchmark or have you used your cash flows and your growth as a benchmark to arrive at this valuation? Because one is absolute, second is relative. Thank you. So when you look at our valuation uh, exercise, which we have done, when you look at the pricing exercise we have done, we have spoken to almost 100 investors, uh, institutional investors across India and internationally. And if you look at the quality of some of our anchor investors, you have leading sovereign funds like GIC from the government of Singapore. We have almost all leading mutual funds in India in our anchor book, approximately 12 or 13 mutual funds represented in our anchor book, uh, leading institutional investors from various parts of the world as well. So when you look at the quality and the depth and breadth of our anchor book, we have engaged with some of these institutional investors. We have engaged with our bankers and we have, of course, engaged with our board of directors and our shareholders to arrive at what we believe is a fair price for this IPO, um, which is priced at 336 rupees at the top end of the band. And as you rightly pointed out, when you look at some of the metrics which come out from the uh, valuations and from the multiples, uh, and you compare those with what is the prevailing, you will find uh, very clearly, as you've shown on your channel as well, that we believe that this is a fair price, this is an optimal price, and we're very confident about the opportunities for growth that are to come uh, for us in Medanta, uh, both in the short, medium and long term. And when you look at this growth, this growth is not only coming from our mature facilities, which continue to do well, especially over the last couple of years, even when you compare them to financial year 20, uh, from financial year 20 to financial year 22, even if you discount the COVID year of financial year 21, we've seen uh, Kagers of about 20% uh, year on year from our uh, on our revenues, we have very strong EBITDA margins and we have good performance across the board. And this is despite some of the challenges we face with uh, international patients. And even more exciting is some of the growth that we've seen in our new assets, our Lucknow facility currently at about 500 beds, our Patna facility, which started in January of this year, approximately 300 beds. And both those assets performing very well, our Lucknow facility, in fact, performing exceptionally well, already generating about 28% EBITDA margins in financial year 22 and was EBITDA break even in its first full year of operations despite some of the challenges with, with COVID. So we feel very confident uh, about the uh, prospects and the opportunities that we have and with Noida coming on board as well, uh, setting ourselves up not just for the current period but for growth in the long run as well. Uh, want to understand right now, uh, Pankaj, is what's the kind of response that you've got from your anchor investors? Because just looking at the valuation that you just talked about, uh, it's attractive, but it can't be called cheap. When you look at the response that we've uh, received from our anchor investors, to be very frank, it has been completely overwhelmingly positive. So if you look, as I mentioned, and, and you'll be able to find some of the names that are represented in that book, uh, when you look at, let's say, the domestic side, if you look at the top mutual funds, I think uh, there's almost 13 mutual funds, all the leading mutual funds in the country, uh, part of the anchor book. Uh, in fact, possibly even more looking to subscribe that we weren't able to accommodate just given the size restrictions in the anchor book. So on the domestic side, I think just phenomenal response from all the leading mutual funds, leading life insurance companies as well represented in our anchor book. And on the institutional side, you'll see that we've received a very positive response. Uh, lots of sovereign funds uh, participating in the anchor book. Uh, we have healthcare specific funds participating in the anchor book from uh, all across the world. We have international funds that have a very strong investing experience in India across sectors participating in the anchor book. So if you look at our anchor book, I think it was uh, really uh, a challenge we as a company faced and, and our board faced in terms of a problem of plenty. Uh, we had a very long list of uh, people wanting to participate and wanting to participate in a very significant manner in terms of the size. So we have done our best to uh, ensure that we get a fair representation across 
Indian and international uh, institutional investors. And we see that uh, this has been, a, a, frankly, a phenomenal response, especially in this year uh, where we've had certain challenges with, uh, with the market. So really a very strong uh, anchor book uh, by all accounts. And when you look at our pricing, uh, again, coming back to the, the points I mentioned around some of the metrics that we have, some of our financial performance that you've seen, uh, when you look at our EBITDA margins, when you look at our revenue growth, when you look at the trajectory that is to come, uh, really very strong performance setting us up well. So we feel fairly confident. We feel that this has been uh, a, a very good job done uh, by our company, by our board, by the bankers, uh, along with our institutional investors to arrive at a price that is uh, very reasonable. Right. Um, Dr. Treyan, just coming to you now, you know, Nikunj introduced you saying uh, leading cardiologist, but also now one who's donning an entrepreneurial hat. And a lot of the questions that are sometimes are asked from promoters of hospitals when they go public and when they get private equity investors on board is, how are they going to be able to make sure that, yes, they're maximizing returns for shareholders, while at the same time remaining an essential service, making sure it's affordable for the larger good of humanity? You know, I often say from, because you're a business channel, I'll, I'll say it this way, that good medicine may, will make good business, but good business does not make good medicine. So you never lose sight of your core. Your core is to deliver the highest end of healthcare that you can be provided anywhere in the world at the most affordable prices that you can to, so that more and more people can actually benefit from it. And third, the integrity of medicine has to be maintained always. So when you stick to these three core values, you will see that patients will seek you out. You don't have to do things to get patients. They come to you. They want the treatment because they have the confidence and the trust that over the years, we, we have developed this trust with, with millions of patients. And the stickiness is also huge. So that, the, that also gives us the, the confidence that patients actually appreciate what we are doing for them. So with that core value, you have seen the growth that has happened. You've seen the fact that we have been able to take this standard which we created in Gurugram in 2010 and, and uh, transplant it into other areas which are totally underserved and the populations are benefiting from it. So if you had any doubts about the quality of care, we saw, we saw when the, when the first 14 Italians, when India didn't even know what COVID was, was sent to us by the government to say, please take care of them. And we did, we did very, and learned on, uh, very quickly and gave them the best of treatment. Till today, if you look at it, these, anywhere you go in Italy, they know Medanta. They say, oh, you saved our citizens. So I'm just because it was on the news all the time. So I'm saying that these are the kind of things that we have done. We have people coming in uh, from uh, like uh, what we call medical value travel. It's value, not but because of cost, but it's value because we are offering the highest end of care also. So right now, all the growth that you have seen is on the back of our services. The the. We used to have about 11 to 12 percent of our revenue came from international patients, which because of COVID went down say, very, very significantly. And now we see an upswing again. So what we are seeing today, we are expecting that because of we know that now that travel is opening up and the embassies are issuing visas and uh, uh, more promptly, that we'll see that coming back. So that extra growth is still to happen. Right. But ultimately, the last. Right. But the last mantra is stick to core values, stick to best medicine, stick to, stick core to values. providing the care to... with humanely and also at the most affordable cost. And making this, uh, taking that point forward, I'll come to you now, Pankaj, uh, stick to core values, you'll get the pricing right. Um, so coming back to the IPO, Pankaj, what we also see is if the other upper price band you're quoting a PE of what, about 43, which is lower than the industry average, about 50 plus. A very conscious decision? 
So like I mentioned earlier, we've uh, done our price banding uh, in conjunction with our uh, bankers, in conjunction with our board of directors, and also in conjunction with some of our existing institutional investors, as well as uh, the investors that we've engaged with in the past. Uh, if you notice in our RHP, you will see that uh, some of the investors had actually also participated in a uh, purchase, Carlyle, uh, which had about 26% equity, selling about 6% of their equity uh, right prior to this IPO. Uh, the remaining 20% of their equity, they will completely sell out uh, in the offer for sale in the IPO. So they will then uh, extinguish their complete stake. So there'll be no stock overhang in terms of selling or et cetera, uh, as we move forward with respect to the Carlyle stock. Uh, Tamasek, our other financial investor, uh, keen to stay invested in us. They own about 80-90% uh, stake. So in terms of our support, in terms of the guidance that we've received for this pricing, we have very strong inputs from a variety of uh, leading people who are familiar with this space. And when you look at the pre-IPO sale that we did of about 6%, uh, SBI mutual fund picking up some of that stake, uh, Novo, which is a uh, Danish fund picking up some of that stake. And that was also done at the price of uh, 336 uh, just shortly before this IPO. So we feel, as I mentioned earlier, that the price is fair, the price is reasonable, uh, and we are fairly confident uh, about the opening which will happen today. Uh, Global Health, brand name Medanta, the IPO opening today, closing on November 7th, price band of 319 to 336 rupees. Uh, Anchor book has closed. Uh, that's top management saying a very, very strong response. Thank you, Dr. Naresh Sriyan, as well as uh, Mr. Pankatsani for being live with us today. All the very best for your IPO.